Yeah. Uh, good evening, everyone. So, uh, my name is Sajish, uh, my name, myself Satish Kumar Tyagarajan. Um, uh, the topic that I'm going to cover is uh, 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 rapid CSS development. Uh, so, I am not a CSS developer actually. Uh, in, in fact, I'm new to Singapore. This is my first uh, meetup uh, presentation. Thanks for the opportunity. So, I speak uh, about Java, Elasticsearch, web development, CACD around uh, Chennai. So I organize for Elast official Elasticsearch meetups for Chennai and uh, Java and all those stuff. So uh, yeah, uh, to get started. Um, so my, uh, uh, my uh, 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 relationship with CSS is not like a CSS developer as such. Uh, I work with UI teams where we need to uh, come up with the UI uh, much quickly and effectively. That's what we do. So uh, for us, uh, tools is very important so that we can, uh, we can get things done quickly. Basically, we, we belong to service industry. You know how it works. The earlier that we solve the problem, it's better we get the projects. So this is what I feel when we do a web development. So if you consider a HTML, which is a raw content, and it's very clear, it has a better clarity, and JavaScript is more powerful. But when it comes to CSS, CSS is always kind of confusing. Uh, so uh, CSS is kind of, uh, it has its own uh, specific place, uh, the reason being, one, uh, CSS is very simple, and that is the complexity that CSS brings in. The problem is uh, JavaScript, we develop JavaScript only through JavaScript developers, not other people touches JavaScript because they know it will fail. But CSS, everybody touches, BA, designers, developers, everybody touches it. So because of that, what is happening is there, there can be possibilities where you can get started with CSS easily and you can corrupt your project easily with CSS. So it's, it's, it's very important that we go with uh, proper safeguards before we, we work with CSS. So uh, whatever, we, uh, whatever I show you now, uh, this is uh, not because we learn it, learn a lot. With CSS, at least what I felt is, uh, it's not about you learning a lot, but rather you practice a lot. You can understand CSS only by practicing it. That's what I felt. So these are all the challenges that people face. Uh, it, it is applicable to both HTML as well as JavaScript tools, but uh, uh, specific to CSS. So these are all the two challenges that we need to address. You need to have a right mix of tools. That is, we, we should know which tool to be used and what is the purpose to be used. May, many of the times, we use all the latest tools, but we place them in a different way. And that is what corrupting our project. So then interoperability. And these tools are developed, tested separately as a separate unit. And we, when you combine them together, they don't, they don't operate that well. And that is because of that, either you need to take that route or this route. And that is the place where the problem starts, actually. So now, let me start with IDEs. Uh, I use Visual Studio, but you can use any IDEs. But uh, these are all the basic tools that we expect out of, uh, uh, out of an IDE. So for example, let us consider we use a Visual Studio code. So what is the purpose of IDE? Before I get into that, so if you consider JavaScript, Java, or any programming languages. And before we do that, we should understand why, why we develop CSS now. We don't use CSS as a development tool earlier, but nowadays people call CSS a development platform because we write a lot of CSS, and CSS does a lot of things. Where, where uh, we had limitation with CSS earlier, which was done by JavaScript, but now even that part, CSS started to own it. So it's important that we make a proper CSS. And with IDE, for any, like any other languages, the basic things that you expect is you need code completions, you need code navigations, and then there's a tool called Emmet, which, uh, which we will see, and surprisingly many people doesn't understand, use that. Uh, and then snippets. And then the, the red color one, we'll come to that later, but let us see uh, the first basic ones. So now, if it is Visual Studio, uh, so these are all the tools that I use. There are a lot of tools. Um, so first thing is, uh, there is IntelliSense for CSS classes. So I enable that. So what it does is, now it will give you the code completion. Say, for example, now in my case, I used say bootstrap. And then I go to my index.html. It's nothing new, but. So you get all the code completion. So there is no way that you, you, you give a, a different class name that doesn't exist. So that's the idea. And then there is CSS peak that I use it for navigation. So now once you enable it, uh,
How will this? Just do command plus plus. Okay, command plus plus. Okay, yeah. Now uh, I can navigate. That's the purpose of CSO speak. Did I enable it or not? Okay, CSO speak enabled it. Okay, I need to restart. Go to definition. Okay, so I can <coughs> navigate it. And then Emmet. Emmet is a tool that not many people use it surprisingly. But the purpose of Emmet is Emmet is. A, a tool which is accessible in all the IDEs. The purpose of Emmet is, as a web developer, we have a, a specific way of thinking. For example, let us let us think of writing an LA, uh, UL LA with uh, five elements. So we say UL, and inside that LA, and then you need five LAs, and then you have A inside. So this is kind of CSS. But this will make your typing much much easier. Apart from typing, it has a lot of other tools also. But that is, we will have a separate thing for that. So, uh, Emmet is cool uh, for typing. So it will make your typing much much faster. And then snippets. I will come to the snippet little bit later. Uh, snippet, as it suggests, reusable set of code that you want to say. Okay, you want to um, uh, say, for example, in in my case, I created a snippet. Uh, a custom snippet. If I say um, in in my HTML, if I type ul. ULL. This is what I want to create. So you can say ULL. So like this, you can write custom snippets. Okay. Now the problem starts. So people use uh, IDEs for formatting, linting, and auto prefixing. I think it is not a good practice. The reason being, the formatting, linting, and auto prefixing they need to happen independent of your IDE. It might happen in your build tool also, like Jenkins CI pipeline also. It should happen. So for that reason, it's always better to use your build tool like npm script, webpack, and all those stuff. That's always better. And now SAS. SAS is often either people. Love it, or people hate it. Uh, it has its own reasons to be used. It has its own reasons not to be used. Uh, so there is situations where you should use it. There is situation that you should actually avoid it. Okay. Now uh, let us see what is what is CSS. Uh, CSS, as you all know, it's a preprocessor where CSS as such a language, it has its own limitations. It can't uh, it can't give you like any other programming language and all those stuff. It's like TypeScript for your JavaScript, Pug for HTML, a CSS is for your CSS. But then these kind of language for languages always comes with these limitations. Some people complain that I need to get deeper, so I will use the language as it is. Why should I use another decorated language? Is it like just a sugar coating? That's the thing. But actually, if you dig deeper, it has its own space. Particularly when CSS3 CSS3 came, many developers still think that okay, CSS3 is there. CSS3 supports variables, and we don't need SAS. No, SAS is not just about variables. So SAS is about Say if you are if you are if you are manage if you if you want to team your system, theming is still it is better to be managed with SAS because if you look at Bootstrap, Material CSS, take any CSS libraries, their theming is supported with SAS. The reason being it supports custom functions. Uh, custom functions you can have functions in you have functions in CSS, but you can't create your own functions. Reusable functions and custom builds. Custom builds is very very important when you are building a design system. What do we mean by a custom build? So consider you are including Bootstrap in your system. Now in my case, uh, um, I use SAS, so this is my CSS, and finally I, I, I have my uh, I have my npm scripts running, so it keeps watching. So that's the workflow. And now I have my CSS. Now I want to generate my CSS out of SAS. So now, if you say, okay, I included Bootstrap. So now you see, Bootstrap is Bootstrap is part of my SAS, CSS, CSS. Now in Bootstrap, you have two options. It's 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 there in official documentation also, but the the purpose is this. Now you can make custom builds. Consider you are just making a very simple site. That 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 is just a web site. So mostly you are going to deal with layouts. You are going to deal with typographies. You are going to deal with some animations and all those stuff. And you don't need components like forms and all those stuff. You can very well select what you want. Only those items will be bundled in your final CSS, which means the Of course, the file size is smaller, but then you can make 
uh, one way of looking at is, yes, the file size is smaller. Okay, it is going to be performance benefit. It is not just a performance benefit. Consider you are making a design system in a product company where you have lot of, it's like a hierarchical style guide you are preparing. You have your own style guide and uh, below that you have product specific style guides and you want to make sure that this product is safeguarded from the other project. And if you want to create that kind of custom builds, it is always better to have this kind of module systems for module systems still CSS does a better job compared to uh, the CSS modules and all those stuff. But the, the word of caution is one, uh, if you are working, uh, there are, traditionally there is something called node SAS, that is what being used in older Angular projects and all those stuff. Uh, so you might have faced this problem. If your organization is, is kind of restricted, your build systems will not allow to be allowed to download these kind of systems. So the reason being, node SAS is not a JavaScript implementation. It's a binary implementation which will be, which will be like uh, uh, restricted in your firewall. So slowly NPM is giving native things. For SAS, there is something called Dart CSS, Dart SAS, which is written in Dart, but it compiled in JavaScript, which means it will download without any issues. So if you are starting a new project, always use Dart CSS over Node CSS. And then nesting. Yes, SAS is powerful. That's how I started. So the, the complexity with these tools is we should know where to stop. So beyond the point, if you go nesting to, a, to more than an uh, allowed items, it might complicate your project more than simplifying it actually. So uh, be cautious about nesting. And uh, one good thing is uh, there's a concept called immutable CSS where it's always better you write one CSS class with one CSS property and that is, that is not specified in other, thi other things, just to avoid si uh, side effects. So that's one thing that we can consider. And then style lint. Style lint is a linting. Um, so wherever, say for example, now let us consider uh, a case where you have your variables and then you don't define anything it doesn't see now this is for your kind of static code analysis where if you make a problem it's it's always better for stale lint you can in, you can install it here also Um, it's better ID also notify, it, it's two way checks. Put that check in your Visual Studio also, as well as put it in your uh, build tool, it's always better. Just to have an earlier feedback. Now coming with, coming to an interesting part actually. This post CSS, uh, post when uh, uh, people talk about post CSS, okay, post CSS is there, we are going to use post CSS. Post CSS is not a single tool. Rather post CSS is a tool chain that makes a lot of CSS, lot of uh, very useful CSS tools work together. For example, we will be using auto prefixer. Uh, let us consider what is auto prefixer. Oh, auto prefixer means uh, let us take, okay, I have included post CSS already. So let us consider now this is the app CSS. Just for simplicity, I am removing all the other stuff. So now let us look at app CSS. Okay. Our CSS is clean now. Okay. Now, what is the purpose of post CSS? Uh, now, first, let us consider auto prefixer. So, if you make uh, this kind of uh, uh, statements where it is supposed to be converted specific to your browser, so you need to have some prefixes specific to your, uh, your browsers. So, that will be taken care automatically. Okay. Now coming to the second part of the complexity. I, I, in the earlier slides, I told about these tools, they are developed in a, in, with the different different teams. They, it's, not, it's not mandated that they, they work together actually. So now let us take a classic case. Now what I'm trying to do is, uh, this post CSS also pre provides another tool where it says um, tree set. It's like uh, Babel for uh, 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 CSS where you can write future CSS today and it will trans it, it's kind of a transpiler it converts your css into an uh, uh, into the uh, browser acceptable form if you put something like this it is going to make it this way that's the idea now the problem is you take your sas and then you put it here it will not allow you the problem is because sas considers that this is not a valid syntax now we can't make 
this file and this one works together but instead there is an another way the other way is sas provides you the flexibility to import css without if you give an extension without an extension it will be like uh, it will be considered as an just a plain css include now with this the thing is now i have an extra extra css so here consider i keep it and you see uh, it still says okay it is not allowed it the reason being so i need to enable post css support now it will go okay now the way that we make these two things work is we need to tweak our uh, so now if you look at it uh, i'll explain the logic but you can see the code so the way that i did this i put a different uh, tool chain for css as well as sas where if you change the css it compiles the css because css is accepting the syntax and it will put it in my dist with the post css processed now this is post css processed uh, css and then that i include in my sas and that's how i am able to get that finally into my final css so this kind of kind of tweaking is always needed but the, it it comes by trial and error actually okay so now okay so now uh, this is all the things that i learned uh, over the period of time it's always better we keep developers away from css uh, is it really possible yes if we if we go with strict rules it's still possible the way that we can achieve that is make your design system as a root and then allow all your css tools tool set to that project and make your development projects minus css tools so that the css is not at all available to the developers and the second thing is snippets snippet is a great way of abstracting it by writing custom css you can make sure that you have a predefined markup make sure the developers doesn't use different markup for a same looking ui so that you can abstract and then keep css in css as css even though sas supports all the features don't write lot of lot of your css in a sas way try to stick to css and keep it in css it's always better and css as a design tool this is one thing that uh, that people always uh, take it uh, take it in a different way but actually it works so if 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 you are familiar with this terminology this terminology was that few years before but nowadays people don't use it there is a moment called no no psd moment what it says is rather you design your system with a photoshop sketch or these kind of proprietary tools that actually provides psds or jpgs and then that converts it into other tools and then finally it gets into html you do your design inside html and css itself so it's an interesting concept at that point in time the tools were not that much available but now luckily we have tools like bootstrap studio webflow wix.com and all those stuff where you can design your websites and the output of that is css and html itself so whenever we see in online this is the advantage that they put what you see is what you get is the output but actually practically when we use it there is a hidden hidden advantage that i felt rapid design time so i i i did it with two different developers one is a qualified certified usability anal analyst he has around 15 16 years of experience and he has expertise in photoshop and all these design tools when i told him with this idea of designing with css he was adamant not accepting it but it took one year uh, with lot of projects and now when i see it uh, he is able to develop it relatively faster and i tried with a small uh, uh, relatively a fresh graduates 2 uh, 3 years guy and then he was able to he started with uh, css as a design tool and he can come up with the design much much earlier so it's like uh, it has advantage but you should know the right tools and you should you should always make sure you are on top of uh, better practices and that's how you can use css as a design tool but if it is possible it it, it really makes a uh, lot of sense and use tools with basic settings be cautious even though these are all attractive tools uh, in fact in post css there are 200 plus tools actually and i felt some of the tools if you use it it makes your life way more complicated it's better stay away from that so before you use the tool 
start with a smaller team, practice the tool. Once you are confirmed that, OK, this tool actually makes sense for your project. In fact, some of the tools are very specific to your project, and then roll out to the rest of the teams. That's always better. So thank you. So. Another applause for this very informative talk. Uh, today, a lot of people are next